We've got 800 U.S. military personnel remaining in Niger at this point. How dangerous is the environment there? Can you give us an idea of what the conditions are likely to be on the ground? Hi, Alex. Yeah, th thanks for having me on. I think it's important to remember what, what's going on with these forces. They're, they're in what the military would refer to as a semi-permissive environment, which in many ways can be the most complex environment that military units can enter. Permissive is safe. You walk down the street. Non-permissive is full-scale war in a place like Iraq several, several years ago. Semi-permissive is where every day is a calculated uh, risk versus gain sort of equation that forces on the ground have to think through on their own, which is why the U.S. puts its best and brightest, most highly trained operators in these sorts of environment, why we have special, special operations forces in this in this sort of domain so what exactly is the US mission in Africa Chris is it at all possible that these soldiers were involved in a direct action operation well, the, the AFRICOM has been very clear about what the role of special operations has been for several years now. I mean, AFRICOM goes back 10 years, but we've been operating there in this sort of environment for, for quite a while. And the goal there is to allow African nations and African forces to solve their problems in a through, with, and by training relationships, which is, you know, dead center mass of what special forces in the, in the U.S. Army specifically are trained to do. These, these are what our Green Berets have been doing for generations. Um, and so that, that mission hasn't changed. Now, when those forces Forces find themselves in a, in a firefight, like they did in this ambush situation. Of course, then you're obviously you're involved in combat operations, but that's not the stated mission, and they're clearly not seeking that on a day-to-day -day basis. There, there, there are occasional drone strikes, but that doesn't mean the forces on the grounds are, are going out looking for these sorts of fights. And shortly before this attack, there's another African nation, Chad, which, which drew, uh, withdrew its troops from Niger. And this happened, this attack happened after the Chadian officials complained about their country being added to the Trump administration travel ban. Is, is there any possibility that the Chadian withdrawal contributed to more dangerous climate for Americans in Niger, or are those unrelated? It's really difficult to say. Uh, that, that requires much deeper uh, reflection and, and insight into what was going on between the Chadians and, and our forces there. I, I can say that conditions on the ground are, are critical to forces like this. So the relationships that happen behind the scenes where different parts of coalitions and uh, different nation states and actors talking to each other, that, that happens at multiple deeper levels than even forces on the ground can sometimes tell. So disruption to relationships certainly can lead to a dis disgruntled actor that may be involved in sharing information that they shouldn't. But it's very difficult to say from, from an outside perspective yet how, how much of an effect that that decision had. So, Chris, I'm sure you heard that the commander of U.S. forces in Africa, General Thomas Waldhauser, he told Congress earlier this year he has only about a quarter of the reconnaissance flights that he needs. So could the U.S. be carrying out this mission in Africa with one hand tied behind its back? Well, it's an interesting question. That this is a, this is the game that we have to play around the world now, where we have our our best forces forward in high risk environments, uh, as I described them as semi -per permissive sort of situation, and you're constantly running the math between how much of a presence do we want, how many forces do we want, what sort of security posture do we want them to have. The more that increases, the more you risk alienating the local population and sort of creating a troubled relationship with your hosts. Or do we scale that down to a, you know, a thinner number and assume the risk, but also hopefully interact in a more positive way with the, our coalition partners on the ground? So incidents like this are somewhere in the middle of that risk equation. So obviously, I think senior leadership will sit back and reevaluate uh, the presence on the ground, how they're posturing their forces. But you know, to predict something like this and escalate the force before you, this sort of situation arises could also have second order effects that are, that are hard to read. Okay. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.